All right, so the recent thrift store buy was um, eight more uh, quart size mason jars, and they were $1.99 for four. So altogether I paid $4 for eight jars, which is not bad. I won't pay that much for them. So it turns out that they're like 50 cents a piece. I won't pay much more than that for them though. I mean, I could buy them new if I was going to pay more. So, and second item on the agenda, I've already started to wash, but uh, it won't require that much work, is this very nice cast iron frying pan. It's got a tiny bit of rust, two rust spots in the center. Three maybe, yeah, actually, no, two. Let's see. Yep, two rust spots there. A little bit of rust on the back, but not bad, but it is a lodge. So, okay, worth buying. I wouldn't have bought it if it was the Chinese brand. I'm trying to stay away from those things now. Support the Americans. And I like the lodge brand much, much better than I do the stuff that comes out of China. It's, it's got a, a better finish. Anyway, this shouldn't take too much effort to bring back. It, it looks like it was just tucked away someplace and ignored until it was sent to the thrift shop. So I'm actually quite thrilled to have found this one. I do uh, bypass a lot of cast iron that I see at the thrift shop, but, but uh, good quality products are worth looking at. So it's going to take a little bit of work to bring this back up to spec, but not much. And it might end up becoming a favorite fry pan. I like the size of it. It's not too large. So that's it for now. Okay, so I have taken my new little old cast iron fry pan that I bought at the thrift store and I have scraped it down and cleaned it and I've put a thin coat of oil on it and it is now sitting in my oven <laughs> cooking. So hopefully I'll, I'll put a few layers of oil and heat, oil and heat, oil and heat until I get a nice um, finish on it again, a nice um, stick-free surface. Um, but we'll see. I'll see what it takes. It looks good. I like the size of it. I like the weight of it. I like that it. it's, it's a nice little frying pan. I'm really thrilled that I bought it. I paid just $7 or $7.25 for that frying pan, which is an awesome deal. And any large frying pan costs a small fortune up here in Canada. I don't. I know that you can get fairly reasonable deals in the U.S. on occasion you can get them on sale and yes you can get them on sale here too but there's still a fair bit price here. So yeah did did that washed my mason jars uh, washed as I say my cast iron frying pan and putting one layer of seasoning on it and I'll continue to season it until I'm happy with it. I managed to get all the three little rust spots out of it in front and back. The back not too worried about, but there was a rust spot on the back, but you want to clean that up just as much as well. I also picked up this little book called 500 Fat-Free Recipes, and I don't really have an issue with fat. As I said, I have an issue with my tummy, and that is more of a discipline issue than it is a fat issue. I like my sweets, and there are times that I just, you know, I have to have that chocolate, I want that chocolate, or I want that sugar dessert, and uh, to heck with the tummy. But uh, if, if, you know, and, and I don't exercise enough, so whether or not this, the recipes in this book will do me any good is uh, probably more dependent on how I deal with what I eat. Um, and yeah, fat-free recipes won't go over that well in this home. <laughs> Somebody likes his meat. And uh, even though I can eat just a small amount of meat and be happy with that, 
he would rather have meat than vegetables, and I'm the other way around. So I guess when I cook, I go heavy on the vegetables for me and heavy on the meat for him, which is fine. But yeah, some of these recipes look pretty awesome, like honey apple waffle, waffles and apple oat muffins and artichoke dip and oven baked corn crisp chips, pineapple bites, curried broccoli, apple soup. Hmm, never heard of apple soup before. Okay, well, I've got to take a closer look at this. And yes, I leafed through it after I purchased it and realized there isn't one recipe with any meat in this book. So it should be rather an interesting. It, it, it's basically a, a book for a vegetarian, although it, it, it does not state that on the cover. But that's, that's all good. It's all good. It uh, cost me very little. And uh, I like to have a variety of recipes that I can choose from. We tend to eat the same things over and over and over again. Uh, you eat what you're comfortable with, you eat your comfort food, and around here it's pasta, but that's that's a given. Being uh, raised, being born and raised Italian, and pasta's a staple, and uh, my husband loves pasta too. He's not Italian, but he loves his pasta, so pretty easy to get away with that in this home. So, But even when we make pasta, it's a small dish of pasta, and there has to be meat, and a salad on the side is always a good thing too. So it's a more of a well-rounded meal, not just this big heaping dish of pasta with nothing else. Yeah, that, that would be rather boring, actually. So anyway, um, Perhaps I'll be able to get some shots of that frying pan after it's been seasoned a few times and uh, see how it turns out. And uh, yeah, my mason jars are all washed and they're fine. Yeah, just adding to the collection. Lord knows I don't need mason jars, but uh, I have been canning a lot. So, and uh, I have a huge canning job coming up with my tomatoes. I always do anywhere from 100 pounds to 150 pounds of tomatoes every year. Uh, unless, of course, it was like the year before last where I probably did double and triple that and did no tomatoes last year because there was no need for it. Uh, I had more than enough to last me more than two years. I've been giving it away as well. I, I do like to can fresh every year. With tomatoes, you do notice a little bit of a flavor dif difference from the jars. They're all good. They're probably good for three years, but I do notice a difference in flavor for something that's fresh and something that's been sitting on the shelf for two years. So I much prefer something along the fresh lines. And you especially notice that with tomatoes. I don't know if you notice it as much with other foods, but tomatoes, it's very abundant to me. So anyway, yeah, probably have to do an assessment of what jars I have. And uh, with tomatoes, I would probably want to use small mouth jars because the lids are a whole lot cheaper to buy. And they certainly don't need a wide mouth for a tomato puree. You know, the wide mouth are best saved for, uh, actually the french fries would have been done, would have been better done in a wide mouth jar. It would have been easier to pull them out. So yeah, there are some foods that are best uh, canned in wide mouth. Fermented foods are also best done in a wide mouth, but things like tomato puree, uh, definitely the, the uh, regular mouth jars are just fine, and I do them in pints because for the two of us, one pint jar is enough to make a nice tomato sauce, or it'll do uh, pizza topping, sauce for pizza toppings. It's just a matter of how I flavor it. Like it's the same tomato puree that I use for whether it's for chili, whether it's for pizza, or whether it's for pasta. It's just a matter of what seasonings I put in it, how I flavor it, and um, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So yeah, tomato's a big thing here. Anyway, that's coming up, and I'm sure that I will be uh, making a video, and it likely will be a long one. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, thank you for watching. 
And if you haven't subscribed, please do and like and comment. Let us know what you think. Have a great day.